Last time I talked to you guys, I had a damn bucket on my head, but today we're talking very different. We're talking about two W's. The Jays beat the uh, Detroit Tigers last night 3-2 in 10 innings, and they win today 2-1. to one. With the two victories, the Jays now improved to 68-61 and 61 on the year. And as I said countless times, enjoy the wins, people. At this point of the year, enjoy the wins. If the standings go crazy and they, things start to look good, great. But as of right now, I just want to see this team play well and win some ball games. All right? And they did that yesterday. We'll start off with that game as they won an extra inning game. Like, who would have thunk it? I mean, I think, I believe they're like 2 and 9 or 2 and 10 going into the game uh, in extra innings, which is horrendous. But they won one. And it's nice to watch. Nice to see for the Toronto Blue Jays. But the top of the sixth inning is where the offense got going for both teams. Alejandro Kirk takes a high cutter deep to left field and it's gone. Solo bomb for Kirk. Put the Jays in front. one nothing. Bottom of the uh, top of the seventh inning. Bo Bichette comes up with Randall Gritchick at second base with two out. We all know the running, runners, uh, hitting with runners in scoring position. Woes the Jays have had lately. Not in that moment. Bo Bichette hits a single through the right side for a base hit. Gritchick comes in to score. The Jays extend their lead. It's now a 2 nothing game. All right. Good stuff. Bottom of the seventh inning, however, Alec Manoa was dealing to this point, but he struggles here. Candelaria hits an RBI single. Jonathan Scope comes in to score. They bring in Trevor Richards, and he gets the ground ball. Looks like the double play to end the inning, but they can't quite turn it as the throw is just late at first. Haas hits the fielder's choice. Grossman comes in to score, and we're tied at two. Great! Another game blown in the seventh inning or later. But however, the MVP from this game, Corey Dick, well, yeah, offensively, Corey Dickerson comes up in the top of the 10th inning with Vladdy at second base and did exactly what he has done all game long. Just, they want to play me in the shift, slap it the other way. That at bat they didn't have on the shift, doesn't matter because he blooped it in there in front of Badu in left field. Vladdy almost trips and falls heading around third base, but he... He regains his balance and slides head first in, and he's safe. And the Blue Jays have a 3-2 lead. Oh, my goodness. You, you Just lock this thing down, please. And you know what? You got to give Charlie where, where credit is due, man. You, you really do. The fact that he's like, you know what? Screw this. Romano, go back out there for a second inning, please. He did that, and he locked it down, and you win it 3-2 in 10 innings. Great job. Offensive stats, Bo Bichette went 2-for-5 with an RBI in the game. Corey Dixon, 3-for-4. All three hits were to the left side. Two in the shift, which beat the shift. And the other one, who cares? She just blew that thing in there. 3-for-4 with an RBI in the game, winning RBI for Corey Dickerson. Lourdes Gurriel Jr. went 2-for-3 in the game, walked twice as well. So he got on base four of the five times he came to the plate, so a big job for Gurriel. Jays had 12 hits and eight strikeouts in the game, only three runs on 12 hits. That's not what you want to be seeing, but you won a game. Don't complain. It is what it is, right? Pitching-wise, Alec Manoa in six and a third, allowed four hits, two runs, eight strikeouts, and did not walk a single batter. We talked about it in the White Sox, his, his last start against the White Sox at Rogers Center, how he was battling his, in his command most of the night, but he found a way to grind through it, and he did a great job. Today, totally different, or I guess last night, totally different story. He had the command, his two-seamer was on fire, and his slider was just wipe out. Obviously, a couple missed pitches there to Candelario uh, and uh, and Jonathan Scope there in the, in the bottom half of the seventh inning. But, again, six and a third of two run ball. I, I'll take that any day. And he didn't walk a batter and had eight Ks and strike out Miggy three times. Yes, sir. Alec Manoa was fantastic. Trevor Richards went two thirds an inning. No hits, no walks, no strikeouts. I remember that ground ball that almost was a double play. Was obviously with him on the mound. But you can't blame Trevor Richards. He got the ground ball. It is what it is. Joaquin Soria went a clean inning. Yeah, it was leadoff walk allowed, but the vet doing what a vet does. Goes out there, leadoff walk, no problem. Gets two strikeouts, gets out of the inning, no problem. No hits in the, in the inning, no runs allowed. We are tied at two still there. And Jordan Romano went two innings, allowed one hit, no walks, no runs, and two strikeouts to pick up the big time save. He was masterful there last night. And you go into today now 
looking for a Series W, looking for the first Series win since that Springer moonshot against Boston at Rogers Center. Yeah, before the road trip. That's how bad this team has been lately. And you win it 2-1. to one. You're now 68-61. You win a series. You've won a couple games in a row. Now you got Baltimore coming to town. So a great job winning those last two games. And maybe get on a roll here with Baltimore coming into Rodgers. And you play them 10 more times the rest of the way. So let's see what they can do. But let's talk about this ball game that happened just this afternoon. Jose Barrios got the ball for the Blue Jays. And the question was, you know, is he going to is he gonna get that bounce back out? His last three outings have not been good. The first two... His command was awful, right? Not throwing strikes. I think he walked seven guys in, in those two starts, which is not Jose Barrios. And then in the last game against the White Sox, he had eight strikeouts and didn't walk a batter, but he was giving up hard contact after hard contact after hard contact. It was an awful night in the office there for, or really an awful first inning for uh, Jose Barrios. But today, oh baby, he was spot on. The guy went seven innings of one run ball. It was an unearned run because of the error for Kevin Smith to lead off that inning, but he had 11 strikeouts and did not walk a batter. His last two starts, I don't care what the runs allowed in against the White Sox, he has, where are we here, 19 strikeouts and not a single walk. That's more like Jose Barrios. One run over seven innings, six hits, no walks, 11 case, one off his career high. He was dynamite tonight. Well, he's playing the Detroit Tigers. Do you think I care? No. He did a job against a team that he probably should have done a job against. Now, the question was, though, what sort of offense are you going to get? Well, top of the first inning. We have not seen a lot of early offense from this Blue Jays team lately. But top of the first, Bo Bichette hits one deep to right field. And it's gone. A leadoff ball. Or, I guess, no, it wasn't a leadoff. Because Simeon was a leadoff. But a first inning home run for Bo Bichette, putting the Jays in front one nothing early before Barrios even touches the hill. Beautiful. Top of the fourth inning, Kevin Smith goes deep. His first big league home run. And get used to seeing that, people. He's a, he can hit the home run. And we've all seen that he's a pretty good defender despite that error um, uh, in this game that led to the run. He's a sound defender at third base. Him and Valera have done a great job. Obviously, Espinal hit in the eye. You're going to need a good defensive third baseman. And you got two of them there. So that's very, very good news there. But Kevin Smith with the bomb, putting the Jays up to nothing. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Harold Castro's an RBI single. Jonathan Scope comes in to score. Scope was obviously the base runner that should have been out for uh, Kevin Smith. The ground ball that he had, but he committed the error. But uh, one run allowed for Jose Barrios over seven innings. Fantastic. The Jays have an opportunity. I believe it was, well, I believe it was the top of the seventh. Bases loaded, nobody out. They get nothing. I believe Hernandez strikes out and Kirk grounds into a double play. When you're struggling with runners in scoring position, stuff like that happens. My God, this team is in a rut when it comes to runners in scoring. And they have, what, three or four hits total in the series with runners in scoring position? It's awful. It's awful. Right? I, I'm thinking to myself in my mind, I'm like, is this like... You're only up 2-1. You have a chance to blow this game open. You don't. Is this a disaster waiting to happen? Well, after that top of the seventh inning blunder, Barrios goes out there. 1-2-3, no problem. That was his final inning. And then Adam Simber goes out there, does a job. Tim Mesa does a job against his first big league save. And the Blue Jays lock it down, winning 2-1, win the series two games to one. It's nice. It's nice talking about wins. I can do it all day, people. And it's nice when you win a series. It's even more positive. Let's get to the stats for today's game. Bo Bichette had a big night at the dish. Don't like him running into the out uh, or getting into that rundown late in the game. However, it is what it is. He went three for four. The run scored an RBI. Obviously had the home run. And he walked by once. Got on base four of the five times he came to the plate. That is more like Bo Bichette that we all know and love. Go deep. Then hit a couple singles and get on base somehow. Big job for Bo Bichette. And Vladdy. Vladdy had a couple more hits today. He was two for four of the walk. He got on base three of the five times he came to the dish. So a good job. and Good day in the office there for Vladdy too. Team had 10 hits overall. Only struck out six times. But again, like we said in the in, in last night's game, he had 12 hits, only scored three runs. He had 10 today, but only two. And it's crazy. You know, Vladdy and Bo combined for half of those hits. Remarkable stuff. But the main focus today was the pitching staff. 
watching this Blue Jays team get a 2-1 to one lead in the bottom of the sixth inning, and knowing you have to get through the rest of the bottom of the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, and the ninth, with a 2-1 to one game, it sounds next to impossible for this team. With Romano down and not playing, obviously he's pitched two innings yesterday, you're going to need some other guys to put in the work. Right? You, don't have the, you don't have the vet closer, Soria, to come out there and bail you out. But the guys that went out there did a job. Like we mentioned, Barrios, fantastic. Seven innings, six hits, one run, 11 strikeouts, didn't walk about it. Brilliant stuff. Adam Simber, two thir thirds of an inning, got a strikeout, gave up a hit, and got pulled from the game for Tim Meza, and he did a job. An inning and a third, allowed one hit, that was it. No Ks, no walks, no strike. No, no, no runs allowed. Tim Mesa does a job, and the Blue Jays win it 2-1. They win the series. <sighs> it's nice talking about wins, but I would like some more runs. I would like this team to start hitting, getting some more hits with runners in scoring position. Now, the good news is, you don't have to play Detroit anymore. So all those abysmal hitter, uh, hits with runners in scoring position numbers against Detroit this year, you're not going to see them again. So that, that's a very giant positive. Now, the Jays come back home to take on the Baltimore Orioles for a three-game set. I believe, is Robbie Ray on the mound? I want to say it's Robbie Ray on the mound tomorrow, but I could be totally wrong. Could be, I, think, I think I'm right. I'm pretty sure it's Robbie Ray on the hill for the Toronto Blue Jays uh, in game one against Baltimore tomorrow. I don't know the pitching. I forgot to write down the pitching matchup there tomorrow night at Rogers Center because the Blue Jays start up a three-game set against Baltimore. And Jays fans, I'm not saying they're going to make the playoffs, but I think if we... Anything short of two of three against the Baltimore Orioles is horrendous. That team is downright terrible. This is a, this is a series where the Jays can their, their offense can wake up and their pitching staff can continue to deal. Like this is a series where I think the Blue Jays could really break out offensively. Now we need to see it though desperately. And Teoscar Hernandez went from red hot to ice cold. So fast, he was like 0 for what 0 for 10 in the series, something like that. Not a, not a good series at all for Teoscar, but hey, we don't have to see Detroit anymore. So that's a positive. All right, so you know what, guys, that is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video and enjoyed the two W's over the last couple days, smack the like button to appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button if you guys are not already. Comment down below your thoughts on the video, your thoughts on the game, what you like, what you not like from today's ball, today's and yesterday's ball games. Um, the Toronto Blue Jays, the fact that they held on to two one run leads, it baffles me. But it's great to watch. All right? So hit that like button if you guys enjoyed this one. Hit the subscribe button if you guys are not already. Comment down below all your thoughts on the game, guys. Twitter is down below for myself. Follow up. Send me a DM. Do all that great stuff. The Instagram page is down below as well. So follow up there. If you have not done so already, I will talk to you guys. Jay's edition tomorrow night in the opener against you. I believe it's tomorrow. I don't think they have an off day. Either way, they play Baltimore next. That's what I'll be talking to you guys as they look to open up a home, the, the home series against the O's on the winning note. One game at a time. Enjoy the two today, but uh, next up, Baltimore. All right, let's do a job, at least two of three, all right? So thank you guys for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll talk to you guys then.